Welcome, welcome, welcome into my safe place, 414 Hub Blueprint Podcast. I am Apostle Jacqueline Hudson, encapsulated in my safe place is for such a time as this. Many in this hour will be stretched and embark into new things. Come and go with me to the path of least resistance. What is my safe place? Wisdom, knowledge, gems, hidden things God reveals in secret. This is episode 45, and the title is, It's in the House 2024. It's in the House 2024. And so this episode is revelation, confirmation, and a reminder of his word, his precious word, all rolled in to one. The revelation is God knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. The word was God and the word was with God. And so with that said, he gave me this word to speak to a pastor three years ago. And I'm not going to say the names of the pastor, but he did give me this word to speak. And I hadn't even seen this passage that I'm going to read in a, in a few seconds. I had not seen it in God's word. He reminded me of the word a few days ago in, as I was reading it in my study, in my study time. And so he reminded me, but most importantly, he gave it to me to speak to a pastor three years ago. And it just came off the dome which only God can do that because I didn't know of the word. And so with that said, it's confirmation because I read it in his word the other day. He had me speak it three years ago, but I read it in his word. And so I was like, whoa. Now, three years ago, this word didn't apply to me. It wasn't for me personally. It was for that pastor. But I've now read it as of a few days ago, and it's, it's for me now. But there are those under the sound of my voice that this word applies to. And so I'm going to read it for you right now. And that word is... It's 2 Kings 16 and 8. And it is, And Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house and sent it for a present to the king of Assyria. I don't know if you heard me, but it says, And Ahaz took the silver and gold and that, excuse me, and Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house. So that's double. That's double. It says in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house and sent it for a present to the king of of Assyria. And so, <clears throat> again, when he had me touted, speak it boldly, might I add, to the pastor three years ago, I just knew I was supposed to speak it, and it just flowed like rivers of living water, like rivers of living water. And so with that said, and then now I read it, I read it, excuse me, for myself. And when I saw it, I was like, oh my goodness, 
And it was so, it's quintessential God that he would release it right now, right now, right now. Just days before we were, I would, we were about to cross over into 2024. I released a word earlier today that he gave me. And it also, it also, excuse me, it also was a word that he had me speak to someone four years ago. And that word is, there is more. There is more. Only this time, it's, there's a, a quantifier on it. There is more in 2024. But back then, he had me speak it to a person. And this wasn't a pastor. He had me speak it to that, that person. And it wasn't about a year. It was a, about an event. So I wanted to make sure I was clear on that. The other thing is, when the Lord had me tout that word to the pastor three years ago, not only was it not for me, it was the season for that pastor, but it was in the house, in the house of the Lord, okay? But it was also the Lord had it to manifest in instantly, so instantly, that word was fulfilled. And it was truly in the house. The pastor had a need for one of his projects that the Lord had chartered him and mandated for him to do. And there was someone in the house that wrote one check for his need. And it was a large amount. But don't always get stuck on the money. Yes, money is key to carry out, to advance the kingdom of God. It is key. It is quintessential God that, and God knows, to advance the kingdom of God, it, it takes money. But we must be clear that God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. So there's no limit to money. He, he really doesn't, he don't need our money. He does not need our money. Let me repeat, God does not need our money. He requires our obedience. It, it is meant for us to trust and obey. That's what's key. So with that said, because many people would say, like, oh, my, the church always gets our money. Da, 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 da. So if you have that mindset, you might just need to <laughs> go the other way. <laughs> because in order for God to carry out his requests, his, his exploits, he requires our obedience. And obedience is better than sacrifice. So it could be the house of the Lord. When this passage, this title, it's in the house. It's, it could be, it definitely could be in the house of the Lord. And if it's the house of the Lord, then it applies. If that house, the church, the tabernacle, if it's not God's, then this, this doesn't even apply. Because this applies to this word, God's word, it applies to his house. But it could also be your physical house, your own personal home, where it's in the house. Back long, long ago, I'm, I'm reminded, I was reminded this week of Grove, G-R-O-V-E. It's a place where people gather. And many times back in the day, or even recently, even today in today's time, people will start out their churches in the home. You know, it's, it's uh, comfortable. It's 
you, you really don't have to spend a lot of money. It's one way to get started in your home. And I'm reminded of that with my grandmother in this season. It, in her home years ago, years ago, she held, she, her, she, her church was in her home. She started in her home. It was a grove in her home. And she was obedient. She listened to the voice of the Lord and she began to invite people in and even one by one and praying for people and holding a service, even in the smallest of numbers in her home. And because she did that, I am a byproduct of that. But I didn't even know that she did that until recently. I have another grandmother, great grandmother, and she too, she started a church. It wasn't in the home, but it was in a small church in in this specific region that I'm in. And so with that said, what is quintessential God? God will reward us. He will reward us for the labor of our hands and for our obedience. But it means we have to carry it out, walk it out, go all the way with him. So then the other thing, referring to this word, it's in the house. I was at a service the other day. I'm saying the other day, it was uh, last Sunday or Sunday before last. And it was a worship service. And they sang a number of songs and so forth and so on. And um, the pastor spoke. It was a visiting pastor. And he came up at the end and he spoke a word. And there's a reason why I'm going into this level of detail, but I won't say his name. And so he spoke a word and I heard the word from the Lord when he spoke it. He spoke everything but one word. He didn't tell the people to repent. And so nobody was healed in that service. He even said, in 72 hours, you will have the answers you need. But he forgot to tell, and I'm saying forgot, I know because I know he he didn't forget, but he did not release that whole word. And in these hours, in this hour, in these moments, in these seconds, it is essential to give God's word the way he said it to you. If you don't, you are a lying prophet. It is it is necessary. It is also necessary to say what God tells us to say. And I can no longer just say prophets, pastors, ministers because God has poured out his spirit. I'm not saying it's the last time but he has definitely poured out his spirit on all flesh. And if you can't see it, you should feel it or something because it is magnanimous in this hour. Okay? So the vibrato of his anointing that is in the atmosphere, you can feel it. I don't know about you, but I can feel it. Because I heard that word when the pastor I heard it. I heard it. And the Bible says we are to check the spirit by the spirit. That pastor did not release all of God's word. And had he released it, had he trusted God enough to release that word in its totality, God would have healed everybody in that room that had a heart to turn it around. The Bible says, not by my might, not by my power, but by his spirit. So not by Jacqueline's might, Jacqueline's power, but by his spirit, says the Lord. God would have healed whoever, whosoever will, who who had a desire to be healed, to be delivered, to be set free. He would have healed everyone in that room that night had they repented first. And God is holding his word accountable in this 
hour. So, but we must, we have, we have an, a duty, and that's to speak it the way he gives it to us. Like in that song or in that movie, he says, sing it like I wrote it. I know that may not be a good example, but uh, it's referring to Tina Turner and Ike. But he said, sing it like, like I wrote it. The Lord wants us to speak it like he gives it to us. If you hear him or he, sh he shows it to you in scripture, he wants us to speak it exactly that way. The other word that the Lord gave me a few days ago in conjunction with it's in the house is he is releasing the mother load. And I just want to look up, I want to give you the definition of mother load in case you're questioning what the mother load, what it means. The mother load. He said, I'm releasing the mother load. Here is the definition of mother load. It says something that supplies a very large amount of a thing, quality, etc. A very large amount amount. And then one another interpretation says a rich or important load. So he, the, he actually gave me mother load. And I don't know if any, if, if how it sounds to you, but when the Lord said that to me, I was like, whoa, he, he was making a distinction, a distinction He's like, let's be clear. I want you, this is full clarity or full transparency. He's like, I am releasing the mother load. And so with that said, I wanted to put this before you going. We're just hours away from going. So we're about three hours away from crossing over into 2024. And the Lord wants, so this applies to who you have to take it back to the Lord and determine if it's your season. Because I already mentioned three years ago, the Lord had me speak it to a pastor. And instantly that word was fulfilled. It was in the house. It was in the house of the Lord and it was fulfilled. Now he shows it to me. So it's my season for this passage, 2 Kings 16 and 8. And 8 is new beginnings. And 16, that's double eights. So it's three eights, new beginnings. So that this passage is ripe for crossing over. And he just revealed this passage to me a few days ago. When I say a few days ago, like three days ago to be exact. All of that said, I wanted to put that, put this before you as we go into the new year. And there are so many, there are a number of people that will see the fruit of this word. It's in the house. Yes, in 2024, it's in the house. And I know for myself, there are a number of things that I'm looking forward to, I'm excited for, to take place, to see it fulfilled in 2024. Like the Lord has held me off long enough. And for him to show this to me now, I know it's for me, but it's also for those of you under the sound of my voice. My book, that's another thing. Never say never. The earlier part of, of 2024, it will be printed and released. Finally, finally. So I don't know about you, but I pray that whatever it is, that you've been believing God for, that even if you've stopped and you just 
put it to the side thinking it was never going to come to pass. I, I want to encourage you to pick it up again. To pick it up again and, and sit and watch God work because it's in the house. It's in the house. It's in the house. And that's tied to the word, there is more in 2024. I love you, but God loves you best. Bye-bye.